and let's dive into it. Why it matters. Let's go. Get your popcorn ready. Get your popcorn. Let's go. So we're talking about voters fatigue. And we're talking about why throwing out voters fatigue matters for Nikola Jokic and his quest for his third MVP and to make history. To, to be one of the only three other people have done it. He's vying to be the fourth. Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, and Larry Bird are the only players to win the award in three consecutive years. Let's talk voter fatigue. What is it? It refers to the fact that voters shy away from voting for someone that have won it a couple times, right? They've they're like, oh, well, he might not he might be deserving, but we've kind of given it to him a couple times. So even though his stats are really good or he's having the greatest season, it we should probably give it to somebody else. Which for me is like, if the dude's having a great season and he's leading his team to excellence, why do we have to have voter fatigue? Let's look at this current odds. Joker, Nikola Jokic, is currently the favorite at plus 120. Luka, plus 270. Tatum, plus 650. Embiid, plus 750. Giannis, plus 1,000. So you have all of these really, really good players that, are, you know, they're, they're, they're great. They're the top of the league. We're, this is the best time we've had when it comes to stars in the league on different squads representing and being MVP candidates. The case for Nikola Jokic, third straight MVP, it should be a choose your own adventure at this point. What do you like? What do you enjoy? Stats? Do you like stats? Basic stats here. He's averaging 24.9, 11 rebounds, and 9.7 assists in 33.3 minutes per game. Oh, and by the way, he leads the league at NBA in triple doubles, which by the way, he has tonight. He has another one. Another one. Where's my... Uh, I don't know where my sound drop is. There. Another is. one. Another one. Um, do you, uh, so, stats. You can choose stats as your, your adventure. You want to choose efficiency as an adventure? There's that, too. Uh, he's third in true shooting percentage, 69%, despite dunking the ball just 12 times all season. From a guy that doesn't get dunks and close to the rim shots as much as some of these other guys do, his percentage is pretty damn high. Over half of Jokic's shots are away from the rim. Think about that. On direct actions, among players who have completed at least 100 of those direct actions, Jokic ranks in isolation, second in the first in isolation, second in the post. Shout out to DeMontis Sabonis, by the way. And fourth as the ball handler in a pick and roll. He's also first in true, shoot, true, true shooting percentage among players in the NBA history who've put up at least 15 shots per game. So there you go. There's another adventure for you. Want to go into advanced stats as your adventure? We could do that too. He's a catch-all for advanced metrics. He ranks first or is tied for first in PER, win shares, BPM, BORP, estimated plus minus, and he's third in ESPN's real plus minus. Pretty good. Value. You want to go value as your adventure? Well, you can choose that too. There's 20.9 point percent difference per 100 possessions when you look at how good the Nuggets are with Jokic on the floor versus how bad they've been with him off it. That's second largest gap in the league. Two seasons ago, by the way, when he won his first MVP, the net difference was around a third of what it is now. The Nuggets register a plus 11.3 net rating with Jokic. The closest All-Stars to Jokic number, Joel Embiid to that 11.3, and Jason Tatum at 8.8 .8 and 9.1 respectively. Denver's also the best offense in the NBA, which is nice. Their attack is the most efficient in league history with Jokic. 123.4 points per 100 possessions. I have a lot of stats to throw at you. I, it's how I it's how I'm rolling with this one. Significantly worse when he's off. They're 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 almost they're they're as bad as the Rockets, who are trying to be terrible this year for the draft pick when he sits offensively. There's a lot of now, all right, voter fatigue. You got to talk into the arguments, right? Oh, two fair points doesn't play defense and he's uh doesn't do well in the playoffs what's his playoff record how how many nba finals has he been to well, let's talk about that too you know some of this is is kind of how he's built his athleticism his legs aren't the quickest he doesn't jump the highest we hear that from Stephen a smith and everyone else he can't jump off a curb but 
if his two options are picking up a foul and getting in foul trouble or permitting an open layup, you probably want to, you know, go for the latter, which is what he does because he's a smart player. But Jokic is not a bad defender. He has fast hands, he positions himself well, he cuts off angles, and he uses his size as an advantage after a shot goes up and it's time to grab the rebound. He might be one of the best defensive rebounders in the sport. He, he's, he's, he's incredible. When he's on the court, Denver has a top 10 defense. They run the scheme. It's a simple scheme. Frequently, he, he stays high with the ball handler in a pick and roll, then recover back to his original assignment after. Ideally, Denver's low men rotates over and provides cover. I'm getting all statistical on you and getting strategies, right? So the Nuggets allow 0.85 points per chance when Jokic is up to touch against the pick and roll. That's 16th best out of 72 players who have defended at least 50 actions in that coverage. The Nuggets also allow 0.97 points per direct play when Jokic drops. That number is better than Brooke Lopez, Miles Turner. But the point here is he's not a bad defender. He's not a liability. He actually, on the court, if they have the system down right, provides a really good, efficient defense. Playoffs. Let's go into the playoff argument. Uh, how can you, you know, attack something that is out of an individual's control? Jokic has never played with an all-star and the most talent, the most talented teammate he's ever had missed the past two postseasons with a torn ACL with Jamal Murray. Last year without Murray and Michael Porter Jr. was the first time Jokic has ever been eliminated from the playoffs uh, in the first round. It's not Jokic's fault that Mason Plumlee botched that last play of Game 2 in the 2020 Western Conference Finals. Just like when throwing out there, hey, Giannis is the best player alive because he closed out the Finals with 50 points, 14 rebounds, and 5 blocks two years ago. We've collectively moved past the fact that Kevin Durant outplayed him in two rounds prior, and KD's shoe, being a little si a size smaller, would have beat the Bucks, and they would have been another playoff disappointment. But using that playoff criteria to diminish iconic all-time superstar who just happens uh, to play extremely well in the playoffs every year despite some terrible luck, that's, it's, it's silly. It's silly, and you should throw that out. There are so many incredible players vying for this award, but right now, Jokic stands above them all. Giannis, he's a hurricane on defense who averages 31 points per game, but his team's offense is substandard when he's on the court. In part due to his own limitations, his effective field goal percentage is about exactly league average, and he still can't make threes or mid-range jumpers despite taking several of those per night. Jason Tatum, Joel Embiid, Luka Doncic, Kevin Durant, Jokic is either more efficient or vastly superior playmaker or both in those instances. He's respectable for his team's success in the league without overwhelmingly a uh, huge use rate. And he, his season high plus 63 in crunch time, it, it, it has the Nuggets in first place. I'll leave it here. Cleaning the glass is a is a, a metric uh, that this 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 uh, NBA uh, website throws out there. It's a metric that they have. Have a stat called expected wins, which estimates how many wins every player's team would log considering their playoff their their point differential. The Nuggets are a 67 win team with Jokic on the court and an 18 win team without him. Nobody else touches that with a 49 win gap. If all this keeps up, Jokic deserves to join Bill Russell, Larry Bird, Will Chamberlain as the only players in NBA history to win three state MVPs, and that's why it matters to throw out voters' fatigue this year. And that's it. That's why it matters. Rant ending. Let's go.